The Challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush with Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Butch Gans was serving a five-year term in the Dawson City Jail. But one night in January, he succeeded in breaking out of his cell and overpowering the guard. By the time his escape was discovered the following morning, the snow had covered his tracks, and Butch was heading north toward the mining community of Poker Bend. Late that evening, he arrived at the cabin of a friend named Zeke Murdoch. Yeah, what do you want? What do you think I want, Murdoch? Holy smoke, it's Butch Gans. <laughs> so dark out, I didn't recognize you. Well, don't stand there yapping. Let me in. Yeah. <coughs> Thought you were in jail down in Dawson. Yeah, I was, but I busted out. Well, how in thunder did you get up here? How do you suppose I got here? I walked. Stoke up the fire in the stove, will you? Yeah. Hey, you're lucky the wolves didn't get you. They're plenty bold around these parts. Yeah, they doggone near did. Old pack of them came at me back there on the other side of the ridge. Yeah, oh, what'd you do? I holed up in the cave and took a few shots at him. Finally scared the critters off. Yeah, why'd you get the gun? Oh, it belonged to the guard back at the jail. Swiped it after I knocked him out. You know, it's a funny thing about them wolves. There's a husky running alongside the leader of the pack. Looked like a big Siberian. Had a white body and black legs. Yeah, yeah, I've heard about that husky. They say it used to belong to some kids around here. Sure doesn't look very tame now. Well, what do you figure on doing, Butch? I figure on staying right here for a while. Are you crazy? You can't stay here. The Mounties are sure to be trailing you. They won't trail me anywhere. It was snowing so hard when I got away, they won't have any tracks to follow. Well, I still don't like the idea. If the Redcoats ever catch you here, they'll haul me in for harboring an escaped criminal. You've got a mighty short memory, Murdoch. Yeah, what do you mean? Looks like you've forgotten about that bank robbery I got sent up for. Now, what about it? You were in with me on that job, Murdoch. They caught me, but you got away. I could have squealed on you, but I didn't. I kept my mouth shut. I realize that. Yeah? Well, here's something else you can start realizing. If the Mounties ever catch up with me, I'm going to spill the whole story to them, including the fact that my partner on that bank holdup was a guy named Zeke Murdoch. Are you savvy? Yeah. I savvy. So you better do a mighty good job of hiding me, Murdoch. Otherwise, you're liable to wind up serving a five-year stretch yourself. News of the jailbreak was telegraphed north to Sergeant Preston in Forty Mile. The sergeant started for Dawson immediately, hoping that King would be able to pick up the escaped convict's trail. As he passed through the settlement of Poker Bend, he stopped off at Jane Blair's eating house. Jane Blair was a widow with two children, Dick, a 12-year-old boy, and Susie, his younger sister. Okay. Oh, hold on, hold on. Your people are still alone. It's Sergeant Preston and King. Oh, you're right. Hi, Sergeant. Looks like we've got a welcome committee, King. Hi, Sergeant. Oh, hi, King. Oh, gee, I'm glad you've come to visit us. Hello, Susie. How's my best girl? <laughs> Hello there, Dick. Oh, and Sergeant, look at the way King's wagging his tail. Well, Hello, you know there, how boy. glad he is to see you two again. Oh, good old King. <laughs> Is your mother home? Oh, yes, sir. She's inside. Are you going to stop for something to eat? Yes, I intended to. If your mother doesn't mind serving lunch in the middle of the afternoon. Of course she doesn't. Not for you. Come on. All right. Are you and King working on a case now, Sergeant? Not exactly, Dick. We soon will be. Bank robber escaped from jail down in Dawson. I'm hoping King and I will be able to pick up his trail. Golly. I'll bet anything King will be able to track him down. <laughs> Mother, Sergeant Preston and King are here. Well, land sakes alive, it is Sergeant Preston. How are you, Mrs. Blair? Oh, I'm fine, thanks. King, old fella, goodness, if you aren't just the nicest dog. How are you going to stop off in Poker Bend a while, Sergeant? No, I'm just passing through on the way to Dawson. I, 
I was wondering if I could get a meal here at such an off hour. Oh, you most certainly can. You just sit right down here and I'll fix something up for you in no time. Thanks. Look at King sit up on his hind legs. Gee, I wish we had a dog as smart as him. Well, you have Daisy, and I'd say she's a mighty smart dog. Where is she, by the way? We don't have Daisy anymore. Huh? She ran away. Well, that's too bad, Dick. You sure she wasn't stolen? I'm pretty sure. We heard she joined a wolf pack. A wolf pack? Yes, sir. There are lots of wolves around here, you know, and three or four different people have told us they saw Daisy running with the pack. Could they really recognize her, or do they just think it was Daisy because she happened to run away? They claim they really recognize her. Daisy was marked in a very unusual way. Well, you know, white with black legs. And they say that's just how this dog was marked. Well, it must be Daisy, all right. Gracious, I'm all out of potatoes. Dick, will you run down to the store, please, and get me a bushel of potatoes? All right, Mother. Come on, Why, Susie. don't bother on my account, Mrs. Blair. Just fix me whatever you have handy. Oh, that's all right, Sergeant. I'll need some for tonight anyway. Be as quick as you can, children. I can't go ahead with the meal till you get back. We'll hurry. Come on. <sighs> I hope you don't mind waiting a few minutes, Sergeant. Of course not. How's everything going, by the way? Oh, I... I can't complain, I suppose. The restaurant does enough business to keep us all fed and clothed. You sound rather worried. Something wrong? I don't want to burden you with our troubles. I don't feel that way, Mrs. Blair. I wouldn't ask if I weren't interested. Well, Sergeant, I... I had to borrow $500 to open up the restaurant after John died. Huh? The note's due in March... I'm not sure whether I'll be able to pay back the money by that time or not. Well, who lent you the money? Noah Hazen. The man who runs the general store? Yes, that's right. Mm. He's already given me one extension on the note, but I don't think he'll give me any more time if I can't pay him back in March. You folks have a lot of friends, and I'm one of them. I hope you won't hesitate to call on us. Thank you, Sergeant, but I hope that won't be necessary. Noah Hazen, the proprietor of the general store, was a grizzled, sour-faced individual in his late fifties. As Dick and Susie entered the store, he greeted them with an indignant scowl. Ah, so it's you two, eh? Huh? Good afternoon, Mr. Hazen. Is something wrong? You're darn tootin' something's wrong. It's that crazy dog of yours, the one that joined the wolf pack. I had another run-in with her this morning. What happened? Well, I went over to Moose Landing to pick up a shipment of canned goods from Dawson City. On the way back, the wolves started chasing my sled. Like as not, they'd have killed me if I hadn't had my gun with me. Was Daisy with them? You bet your boots she was with him. She was running right alongside the leader. Golly, I'm sorry to hear that, Mr. Hazen, yeah. but, but I don't see why you should make such a fuss about Daisy. The wolves would be just as dangerous around here whether Daisy was with them or not. I ain't so sure about that, young fella. If you ask me, they've been twice as bad since she joined up with the pack. She's smart to people's ways. That's the whole trouble. She's smart and she eggs them on. Personally, I hope someone plugs her one of these days. I'd have done it myself if I could have taken better aim. Noah Hazen yeah, continued to grumble as he took the children's way. order. Dick was just paying for the potatoes when the door opened and Zeke Murdoch entered the store. One of these days, the folks hereabouts will organize a regular wolf hunt. That's what they'll do. And believe me, that pesky dog of yours will be the first one to catch it in the neck. I knew she was vicious first time I ever laid eyes on her. Should have been shot long ago. Here's your change. Thanks. Oh, come on, Susie. Oh, well, well, what's the trouble? Yeah, uh, wolves tacked me this morning when I was coming back from Moose Landing. Uh, runaway Husky was with them. Like I just told them kids, the dad ratted critter out you of the... You know, uh, it's not a bad idea you had just then. Huh? Uh, about organizing a wolf hunt, I mean. You're darn tootin' it's not a bad idea. You had trouble with the critters, too? Why, uh, yeah, yeah, I have. A pack of them came at me just the other day. Over on the other side of Spruce Ridge, it was. Is that a fact? I tell you, them wolves are getting bolder every day. First thing you know, they're going to kill somebody. <laughs> they won't kill anybody if we kill them first. Huh? Hey, you're right about that. By jingo, I've got a good mind to organize a wolf hunt myself. Well, you can sure count me in. Uh, how about setting a time right now? Well, now, what about tomorrow? Say we get a gang together and form up about 2 o'clock in the afternoon over at the foot of Spruce Ridge. That hmm? suits me fine. You tell everybody that comes in the store, and I'll start spreading the word around as soon as I leave here. Hey, Thunder, I wish I'd thought of this sooner. I can hardly wait to get a shot at them sneaking gray killers. <laughs> Those wolves won't stand a chance. We'll have every man in town out gunning for them. Zeke Murdoch spread the news about the wolf hunt around the cluster of cabins and log buildings that formed the settlement of Poker Bend. 
As he had expected, the inhabitants responded eagerly to the promise of excitement. It was nearly supper time when Zeke returned to his own cabin. Butch Gann spoke to him irritably. You sure took your time, Murdoch. What kept you so long? <laughs> Wait till you hear what I've cooked up. I'm waiting. Yeah. You know, when we were back in Frisco, you used to be a pretty good man at opening safes. Never mind the flattery. What's the deal? How would you like to tackle a safe over at the general store? What's in it? Plenty. The old guy that runs the store is a local money lender. Hazen, his name is. Noah Hazen. He's got plenty of dough himself. And on top of that, he stores gold dust for the miners around here. <laughs> he had the safe open the other day when I was in there. It's loaded. Sounds interesting. Well, how about it? I don't know. I ain't got any tools. Oh, now you won't need any tools. The safe is an old cast iron job. From the looks of it, you could open it blindfold. Yeah, but it's kind of risky, ain't it? In a little sediment like this, if the old man should wake up, start squawking, he'd have the whole town on my neck. I've already taken care of that angle. That's what kept me so long. What do you mean? <laughs> I've just been organizing a wolf hunt. A wolf hunt? That's right. Hazen gave me the idea himself when I was over at the store. It seems he had a brush with a wolf pack on his way back from Moose Landing. Murdoch explained to Butch about the wolf hunt. And the way all those sourdoughs went for the idea, it looks like every man in town be over on Spruce Ridge tomorrow afternoon. So you'll have a clear field from two o'clock on. Sounds like a cinch. It is a cinch. And the beauty of it is, I'll be sticking close to Noah Hazen all afternoon. <laughs> that means I'll have a perfect alibi. Not that I'll be hanging around long enough to need one. What do you figure on doing? Once we lay our hands on that dough, we'll both clear out the territory. We'll go back to the States and live like kings. <laughs> Murdoch, you're a pretty smart character. You've just made yourself a deal. Sergeant Preston reached Dawson City by nightfall, went immediately to the jail. King got the escaped convict sent by sniffing around his cell, but he was unable to pick up the scent outside the jail. Early the next morning, Sergeant Preston and Constable Blake took King to a point just north of town. The great dog circled back and forth across the trail. Finally, he paused and gave a sharp bark. What does that mean, Sergeant? I think he's got the scent. How about it, boy? <laughs> no doubt about it. King has picked up his trail. And Gans did head north, just as you guessed. Do you think we can catch him before he gets over the border? I don't know, but we're certainly going to try. Come on, King. Line up the team, boy. I'll follow right behind you, Sergeant. All right. Hun, King. Hun, you husky. Push, Chucky. Push, you husky. A short time later, that same morning, Jane Blair was busy at the stove at her restaurant at Poker Bend. Oh, bother. That fire's almost out and the wood's all gone. Dick! What is it, Mother? Run out to the woodshed, will you please, and bring in some more wood. All right. I'll go out with you and help you carry it in. And be sure to put on your parkas, children. None of this running out bareheaded. All right, Mother. Two children Where put on their parkas and went out I'll the back have. door. Go. Hurry up. As they approached the woodshed, they heard a soft whine. Susie, did you hear that? It came from inside the woodshed. Come on, let's see. It was dark inside the woodshed, but in one corner, the children saw a husky curled up on the floor. The dog was white with black legs, and she was thumping her tail happily at the sight of Dick and Susie. Why, it's Daisy. And look, oh. she's got four little puppies. Oh, Daisy, oh, oh girl, nice. golly, it's good to see you again. Oh, it sure is, Daisy. We missed you something awful. Oh, golly, just look at these little puppies. Aren't they cute? They haven't even got their nice eyes open girl. yet. I'm going to run inside right now and tell Mother what we found. Dick, wait. I just happened to think of something. There are people in the restaurant. Maybe we'd better not let them hear about Daisy coming back. Why not? Don't you remember how mad Mr. Hazen was yesterday? He said he was going to shoot Dick at Daisy the next time he laid eyes on her. Golly, that's right. I, I forgot. I bet there are lots of people who feel the same way he does. If they knew Daisy was out here... They'd want to kill her. I bet they would, too. Maybe we shouldn't even tell Mother. She's not mad at Daisy. Of course not. But, but I've got an idea she'd be awfully worried about people finding out. Mm, especially about Mr. Hazen finding out. That's right. And I think... Golly, that's right. But what are we going to do? 
We can't keep Daisy and her puppies hidden out here forever. I know. Gee, I don't know what to do. Let's just not say anything for the time being. Maybe we can think of something later. All right. In the meantime, we can take out something for Daisy to eat when Mother isn't looking. That afternoon, as Zeke Murdoch prepared to leave his cabin and take part in the wolf hunt, he spoke to Butch Gans. Well, I'm going to show off now, Butch. Got everything straight? Yeah, I guess so. I'll crack the safe and hide the gold in the gully back of the store. And tonight, you and me will load it on the sled and hightail it north of the border. That's right. It's a perfect setup. <laughs> I'd sure like to see old Hazen's face when he finds his safe empty. And you're sure nobody will see me when I go into the store? Well, sure, I'm sure. I told you everybody was plenty excited about this wolf hunt, didn't I? Why, when I was in town just a few minutes ago, they were already starting to stream over to Spruce Ridge. <laughs> Another half hour, there won't be a person left within half a mile of the general store. <laughs> Except maybe that dame that runs the eating house, the two kids. Okay, I guess it's safe enough. Sure it's safe, so stop your worrying. I'm going to leave right now. You can get going another half hour or so. Savvy? Yep. I got you. It was nearly an hour later that Sergeant Preston and Constable Blake approached the settlement of Poker Bend. King led them toward Zeke Murdoch's cabin. The two Mounties advanced cautiously. When they were close to the wall of the cabin, Sergeant Preston said, You stay here, Tom. I'll edge around the corner and take a look through the window. Place is empty. Maybe he just stopped off here for a while and then he kept on going north. That could be the explanation. Let's take a look inside. like he spent the night here anyway. How do you know, Sergeant? Look over there in the corner. A pile of pine bars. You're right, Sergeant. Gans must have used them as a makeshift bunk. Which means the regular occupant of the cabin was here at the same time he was. Probably some pal of his. What's the next move, Sergeant? Let's see if King can tell us where Butch went when he left the cabin. Come on, fella. Meanwhile, Butch Gans was emptying the safe at the general store. He had already carried out four large moose hide pokes full of coal dust. He was preparing to carry out one last load when he heard someone come in the front door. <laughs> Butch sprang up with his gun in one hand. To his relief, he found that the person who had entered was his partner, Zeke Murdoch. Murdoch, what in blazes are you doing here? We're in trouble, Butch. We got to get out of here fast. What's up? Plenty. Two Mounties trailed you to that cabin. That's right. They must have come all the way from Dawson City. They're probably on their way here right now. How come you found out about them? Is the wolf hunt over already? Oh, no, it's still going strong. I was up on the ridge with everyone else. I just happened to spot these two mounties come around to bend the trail. But they passed right below me. I sneaked down the slope so I could watch what they were up to. Well, what about the old guy? Uh, Noah Hazen, I mean. Thought you and him were sticking close together. We were, but I gave him the slip so I could watch what the mounties were up to. Oh, what happened? Well, I had a dog with him. He led him right up the cabin. As soon as I saw that, I hightailed it into town. Come on, we got to clear out of here. All right, but wait till I hide the rest of this gold down the gully out back. There's no time for that. They may be here any minute. Oh, keep your shirt on, Murdoch. For all you know, they're still back at the cabin. Don't be foolish. You think they're going to camp there and wait for you to give yourself up? That dog of theirs is a tracker. He led him to the cabin. He can lead him here, too. Well, wait a minute. I'll take a look and see if anyone... like a couple of teams are coming up the trail right now. Yeah, that's them, all right. Well, what are we going to do? Close up the safe, then we'll duck out the back door. I've got an idea. A few minutes later, Sergeant Preston and Constable Blake halted their teams outside the general store. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Store's empty. Pete's sake, I wonder what's happened to everyone. Right now, the only person I'm interested in finding is Butch Gans. Look, King is sniffing at the safe. Yes. Apparently, it wasn't supplies that Butch came here for. No sign that the safe has been forced open. Not likely that Butch would leave any marks. He has a record as an expert safe cracker back in the States. He'd probably open an old relic like this just for working the dial, listening to the clicks. How about it, fella? You go out the back door? Come on, Tom. Let's see where he leads. King paused outside the door, sniffing the air carefully. There were two well-defined scent trails left by the man he was hunting for. One led toward the edge of the gully in back of the store. The other led away toward the center of town. 
King was uncertain which trail to follow. What's the matter? Has he lost the scent? Not necessarily. He's just getting his bearings. He's going over to the edge of the gully. Yes, we'd better take a look. As the two Maltese walked over to see what King had found, the great dog scrambled partway down the sloping side of the gully. What's he up to now? Butch Gans isn't down there. We could see him if he were. He's not down there now, but apparently he's been down there very recently. Oh, you're right. King's found something. Yes, something hidden in the underbrush. Come on, Tom. A moment later, the two Maltese saw what King had found. Holy smoke. Four big pokes full of gold. Gans must have gotten them out of the safe. But why in thunder should he hide them down here? We'll find that out later. Come on. The Mounties climbed back up the slope. They packed the gold on Sergeant Preston's sled for safekeeping. Then the sergeant spoke to King. All right, fella. We still haven't found the man we're looking for. Which way to go, boy? He's heading over toward the center of town. Come on, we'll follow him. Butch Gans was looking out the front window of Jane Blair's eating house as the two Mounties approached on their sleds. His partner, Zeke Murdoch, was holding a gun on the terrified widow and her two children. Zeke spoke. Can you see him coming yet? Yeah. Here to come now. Well, then go in the kitchen, get ready, duck out the back door at the woodshed. Just as soon as I give you the word. Okay. A table had been set and a cold meal hastily scraped together on a plate. Zeke Murdoch had taken a few bites out of the food to make the scene look as convincing as possible. Still keeping his gun pointed at Mrs. Blair and her children, Zeke sat down at the table and stuffed a napkin into his shirt front. Don't forget, I'm going to be holding a gun under the table all the while the Mounties are in here. So you better sound mighty convincing. All right, Butch, get going. They're out front right now. Okay, I'll duck out the back door. Hello, Mrs. Blair. Why... Hello there, Sergeant Preston. Hello there, Susie. Hello, Dick. I uh, I didn't expect to see you back here so soon, Sergeant. I didn't expect to be back quite so soon, Mrs. Blair. Oh. Constable Blake and I are trailing an escaped convict, oh. or rather King's trailing him for us. The scent led to Poker Bend, and now it turns out that the man we're after apparently came here to your restaurant. An escaped convict? Why, that sounds impossible. What did he look like? He's a big fellow, about six feet tall, heavy set, dark hair. There's a small scar on his right temple. I, I don't recall seeing anyone like that. That's funny. What's the matter? King seems to want to go out in the kitchen. Hold it, fella. Not polite to go where you're not invited. Mrs. Blair, are you sure nobody's been here that answers the description I just gave you? Well, he might have been in for breakfast or lunch, I suppose. I'm not good at remembering faces. But I can tell you definitely he wasn't out in the kitchen. No one's been out there, except the children and myself. The sergeant spoke to Zeke Murdoch, who appeared to be enjoying a hearty meal. I don't suppose you've seen the man I'm looking for? Why, no, sergeant, I haven't. I don't recollect seeing anyone that uh, fits the description you gave. He probably came in here to eat when the place was crowded and then went out again after he finished his meal. Well, I guess that must be it, Tom. All right, Mrs. Blair, I'm sorry we troubled you, but I... Uh, what is that? Sounds like something's going on out in the woods here. Maybe that's where Gans has been hiding. Come on, Tom, let's go out and take a look. Briggs, both of you. He's got a gun, Sergeant. Yes, he'll go off the minute either one of you lowers his hands. And don't let that husky make any false moves either. Steady, King. Sergeant, I'm sorry. He was holding that gun under the table all the while you were here. It's all right, Mrs. Blair, I understand. <laughs> so you're Butch Gans' partner, eh? What do you think, Monty? Keep your hands up high, both of you. Mrs. Blair, you get out from behind the counter and collect your two kids. Children. And all of you move in the kitchen. Come along, children. Come on, Susie. Zeke Murdoch herded his prisoners into the kitchen. That's better. Now, don't try any funny business while I'm walking over to the door. Keeping his gun level at his prisoners, Zeke Murdoch moved cautiously toward the back door. He pushed the door open with one hand and shouted... Hey, Butch! Yeah. Come on in here make it snappy. I'm holding a gun in these two Mounties. A moment later, Butch Gans entered the room. In spite of his drawn gun, there was a slightly sheepish look on his face. You dumb dodo, Butch. Why couldn't you keep quiet out there? We almost hit him fooled. Well, it wasn't my fault. It was a husky out there in the woodshed with a litter of pups. What? It's Daisy, Mother. She came back. If you ask me, it's the same husky that runs with a wolf pack. I tried to quiet her down. Then the minute I stuck my head in the woodshed, she started snapping at me. Well, it's no use crying over spilt milk. Maybe it's better this way. We've got the Mounties and we've got their sleds. What do you figure on doing? We'll tie them all up. Load the gold on the Mounties' sleds. 
And make tracks with the border. And leave the Mounties alive? Why not? Why, it wouldn't be more than an hour or two before someone had come in on time. They'd borrow a dog team, come chasing after us. I'll bet you ten to one they'd nail us before we ever got over the border. Yeah. But if we kill them, there's always a chance we'll swing for it. Not if we do the job right. What do you mean? Look, suppose we knock out the whole bunch of them and set fire to the place. There wouldn't be a thing to show that it wasn't an accident. That's not a bad idea. It's a plenty smart idea. Everyone will think the place caught fire from the stove or something. All right, we'll do it. But first, you better take the Mounties' guns away from them so they don't try any funny stuff on us. Yeah, I'll just do that little thing. With his free hand, Butch Gans removed the Mounties' guns from their holsters and stuffed them into his own parka. And while you're at it, you might as well handcuff the two of them with their own bracelets. Good idea. Butch helped himself to the pair of handcuffs which each Mountie was carrying. Then he said, All right, you two, turn around. Now put out your hands and hold them out and back here. Keep them covered, Murdoch, while I snap on the cuffs. Butch put away his own gun and proceeded to snap one pair of handcuffs on Constable Blake's wrists. Neither he nor his partner, Zeke Murdoch, noticed the stealthy way in which King was slinking closer to Zeke. Suddenly, the great dog saw his chance. He charged, knocking the gun out of Zeke's hands. And at the sound of his snarling attack, the sergeant whirled and drove his fist square into Butch Gans' face. Butch staggered and reached for his gun. The two men grappled. Suddenly, the sergeant tripped against a chair. He fell to the floor with Butch landing on top of him. I'll fix you, Mounty. Dick Blair darted toward the back door. Here, Daisy. Come here, old girl. Get him, Daisy. Get the bad man. Husky leaped at Butch, knocking him off the sergeant. The sergeant struggled to his feet. A moment later, he had taken Butch's gun away from him. All right, all right. You got my gun. Get this dog off of me. She's half wolf. I guess he's had enough, Dick. Come on, Daisy. Oh, good girl. Yeah, what about me? For Pete's sake, call off your dog press and get him away from me. He won't hurt you if you lie still. On guard, King. Get up on your feet, Murdoch. You too, Gans. You're both under arrest in the name of the Queen. A few moments later, Constable Blake had been set free and both of the crooks were wearing handcuffs. Dick and Susie Blair were explaining to their mother about Daisy. Golly, Mother, we were going to tell you about Daisy later on. It's just that oh, we didn't want to worry you because we knew that people might make a lot of trouble if they knew she'd come back. Yeah, especially that crabby old Mr. Hazen. <laughs> Don't you worry, children. I won't let anyone do anything to Daisy. Not after what she did this afternoon. As a matter of fact, Noah Hazen will probably want to present Daisy with the biggest stake in his store. <laughs> you see, Gans and Murdoch robbed his safe just before they came oh. over here to the restaurant. Hadn't been for Daisy, they might have gotten away. Oh, golly. That's wonderful. Oh, uh, that reminds me. Since it was really Daisy who captured Butch Gans, you folks will be the ones who get the reward money. Reward money? That's right. When the bank heard about his escape from jail, they posted a $500 reward for his capture. Sergeant, I, I can't believe it's true. <laughs> I guess you folks will be just as happy as I will when Tom and I report that this case is closed. Now, here's Sergeant Preston with a preview of our next adventure. The case, What Price King? When a millionaire named Cyrus Ogilvy tried to buy King for me for his spoiled young son, I naturally refused. But the boy was used to having his own way, so his father arranged to have King stolen. The plot led to some unexpected and highly dangerous consequences, both for Cyrus Ogilvy and for me. Be sure to listen to this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, supervised by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Wednesday until September, when we shall resume our regular Monday, Wednesday, and Friday broadcasts. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck till next Wednesday.